Today's project is building something cool with this old gear. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. Today, we're gonna take this old gear and build it into a console table. Now I know you see an old gear like this, the temptation is to leave it horizontal and put a piece of glass on top. Well, we're gonna do that different. We got some great 150 year old barn wood from Brian Block. He's got a YouTube channel where he's rebuilding an entire barn to make a most incredible metal shop. But more about that later. But we're gonna take this wood make a pedestal and also the top out of it with a metal rim all the way around it. It's gonna be a very cool project. Hey guys, before I get too far into this project, I wanna give a special thanks to our sponsor of this video, Metal Supermarkets, the convenience store for metal. Because of their support, I'm able to do these videos. I also wanna give a special shout out to Rick Valencia and Steve Braun, the newest franchisees of the Metal Supermarkets family. Rick's store is in Dayton, Ohio, and Steve's in Jacksonville, Florida. Go check them out. You can find more detail on their stores and the more than other 80 locations across North America by clicking on the link below or going to metalsupermarkets.com. Our first step is we're gonna build a frame around this for the bottom and the top. And here's the steel we're gonna use. This is one eighth inch by two inch steel flat bar. We're gonna bend the corners, get this all set up, build an entire frame around this. So let's get started. <laughs> Preparing and cutting the 2 inch flat bar that will make the edge around the table. Using the pipe die and the diacro makes bending these corners quick and easy. Carefully marking the holes in these end plates. I really do like working without plans. This bohemian style does work well for me. Setting up the corner for the riser feet, using the fireball square to hold the frame in place and square. Again, carefully making the center line by hand. Using a one inch square tubing for the spacer for the flat bar makes for a consistent distance for the wood top to the steel edge. I've got everything mocked up and I came across a problem and I kind of knew that was going to happen is this is very tall. Now what I could do to remedy this is, well I've got two steps. One is I can make this a bar cart 
be really a cool bar cart. It's about the right height. The challenge with that is I have to add more stuff to it. I have to have a place to put bottles and a place to put glasses. It just adds more work to it and no more value in my opinion. Our height is about 39 inches. We need to be down to 34 inches. So what do we want to do? Well, we could cut the gear off, which is not a promising idea. I think what I'm going to actually do is when I set up this top, I'm going to cut out a slot in the middle of this that's going to allow the gear to penetrate and rise above it. So when this is set up, the gear is actually going to come over the top of it. And I think that's really, really a cool solution. What I want to do now is prep the lumber. And I'm using some old barn wood. It's about 150 years old. If you haven't come across Brian Block, he's taken this 150-year-old barn, gutted it, and is in the process of building the ultimate barn shop. And I want you to go check out his YouTube channel, join in the step-by-step -step process. Well, when he did this barn, he also stripped a lot of the wood out, and he gave it to me. So I'm um, very happy about that, Brian. Thank you. But with being old barn wood, we have challenges. When it was milled, it's not milled consistently, so it'll be thicker at one end than the other. So we have to hand pick it. We have nails in it, and we're just going to celebrate those nails in this process because the table's supposed to have some age to it, some vintage quality, and having those nail holes poke through the wood is all right. How we finish off the wood is going to really kind of determine how much of the patina we originally want to keep. We've got all these great uh, saw marks in the wood. With that challenge is trying to glue these boards together and have them even. So we're going to actually dowel them together. I decided to dowel them together because I could change where the dowels go and get it to line up better. So let's talk about that process. I ran all the wood through the joiner so I have a nice clean glue edge. When marking for the dowels, what you want to look for, a good sharp line that's consistent across both boards. I personally like to use a knife to mark with more than I like a pencil. What's great about marking with a knife is the line is the exact same thickness as the mark that I have on my dowel jig. So the lineup for this is really easy. I'm also using a dowel jig that I've been carrying around for, boy, 25 years and have never used it. So I had to justify keeping it around for 25 years. This project was perfect for it. I like this particular design because I can set an exact distance from the top to the hole so it's consistent on both boards so they line up better. In the gluing process, you'll see that I want to be very careful when I clamp it together that the glue doesn't ooze up into where I want my top to be because I don't want to be digging out glue. I don't want the glue to flow out. And we're going to take advantage of not putting glue all the way up to the edge of the face of the board. And when we clamp it together, that's going to just squeeze together and the glue will fill up at that time. Also, I'm not going to put any glue in the dowels. In my past experience, any time I've tried to glue dowels in, what happens is the glue fills in the hole and you try to push the dowel in and the dowel has no place to go because the glue has filled it up. And I've actually clamped boards together and had boards split on me. So as we clamp this up, you can see I'm laying clamps on the top and the bottom, and I'm really studying how these boards are being clamped together. Are they warping in one direction or another? That also determines how I'm going to set the clamps. Right now, I'm working on the bottom shelf. This is only three boards, so there's only two glue surfaces to combine. So I clamped them together and made one board at one time. The top surface took four boards. I actually did that in three steps. And I did that out of my experience of whenever I try to get too many boards glued together at one time, I get shifting and I get problems and I have to work faster. And I failed at it several times. This wood's very precious to me. Like I said, you know, it's 150 years old. So you don't treat it like normal lumber that you just go buy. You need to take care of it and try to utilize it as much as possible. Fitting the top to these frames is going to be interesting. There's a lot of different ways I can do this. What I'm going to do on this is I'm going to set the frames right on top of the wood, draw out the lines, exactly what the size and shape is, and then I'm going to cut it down. And I'm going to hopefully do the majority of it on the table saw. If it's not quite fitting, I'll bring in a hand joiner, and I'll clean up and shave different areas. I can't make this a, what do I want to say, I don't want to make this too tight a fit. And the reason is, is we need to allow for this wood to expand and contract. I'm guessing I'm going to leave maybe a sixteenth of an inch all the way around, so a uh, eighth of an inch total.
In this process, we've got the boards all glued up. I'm going to calculate how far I need to make the slot in the center for the gear. We're going to use a skill saw to cut that out. I think I can actually use a battery-powered skill saw. And I'm kind of hoping for a bad cut. I don't want a clean, smooth cut. I think to have saw marks inside there may be really kind of a cool way to fix that up. Bolting of the gear to the base was actually pretty easy. I made a couple of U-bolts. Simple, just take some half-inch rod, thread it on both ends, take it over to the bender, bend it up. Bolting of the gear to the base was actually pretty easy. Really, actually a lot more stable than I expected, but it's not strong enough. So the next thing I want to talk about is building legs for this on the four corners to make it more stable. Now, I reached out to Jimmy Juresta. He and I had a conversation about the design issue because making beautiful design and engineering, you have to get them to work with in concert. It's so easy for us to overbuild stuff. Well, one of the suggestions Jimmy Dresta came up with was some turnbuckles, actually. He got that from another guy, and I can't remember his name, that said putting some big turnbuckles in the corner would be great, and I found some. But we kind of came down to the idea of just maybe doing some industrial rods, some all-thread. My challenge with the all-thread is that we've got this really nice top up here, and the idea of these big bolts sticking through just was bugging me. So like I said, I did an announcement on Facebook asking for some help and Richard Fries came up with a fantastic idea and my idea is kind of a modifi modification of his. It's he said, why don't you use some big springs like from a garage door? And I went, wow, that is really a good idea. I uh, went online, tried to find some springs. Springs were actually a little bit more expensive than I wanted and I was telling Jennifer about it. She goes, well, we have these springs in the shop that you could use. And these are actually not springs. They're coils. They're feeders. They put them down these big, long troughs to feed chickens. And as they turn, they bring the feed down to them. And I thought that was a great idea. The problem is they are flexible. So we're going to take a pipe, put them in the middle, and that's going to give the rigidity. And then the pipe will be mounted in the four corners. And I think it's a great balance. It's going to give me the strength I want, um, they'll have an industrial quality to it, but a refinement. So let's get into that. TIG welding a 3 8 inch bolt inside the pipe, and then turning the excess weld to create a flat surface. Drilling the top plate. This plate is for the top of the legs and will secure it to the top of the table. I'm flipping the metal alterating each of the corners to get a consistent registration. Using the MIG welder to secure the plate to the pipe, it's quick and easy and the weld bead will not be seen when the table is assembled. Now for cutting the auger to length. Slip the pipe inside, pushing the spring up against the end plate. I cut the spring a little long so it would compress when I assemble it, and this will prevent it from rattling. Building the foot for the legs. These will be seen, so I'm taking my time. Turning them on the lathe, chamfering the corners, drilling and tapping the centers.
bolting the disc to the pipe makes for a better lineup for the welding. Because this is going to be seen, I'm going to use the TIG welder because I can produce a much smaller weld bead. Drilling the holes for the bolts so they can reach through to the legs. Sanding the wood using the Eastwood Contour SCT with a scale stripping drum. This will enable me to remove the paint without damaging the patina of the wood. Final finish of the wood, I'm using Minwax Clear Water Based Finish. I really do like the water based finish because it's very durable and easy to work with. The console table is done. I think it looks great. What do you guys think? Please let me know in the comment section below. Also, if building something cool is your thing, please subscribe to my channel. Also, click on that little bell so you can get notifications of when the next videos come out. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram where I try to post to let you know what's going on in the shop. And until next time, guys, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.